Soviet PM sniper rifle with a Debramet suppressor was a peak performance sniping setup in 1940. Unfortunately, the Red Army decided to go a different way. That mistake cost them dearly just the one year later. Beautiful. That's Center a hit. Mess. That's a hit. It's a hit on the target. So what is a PEM sniper rifle? Well, the core rifle is M9130 Mosin. That being said, those rifles, a sniper version, was built on a specifically made up lanes at the Tula factory, if we're talking about the PEMs made before the World War II. The tolerances on the barrel chamber and the few other points of the rifle was much higher versus regular M9130. Also the quality control and expected performance was much higher. Rifle was topped with the four power excellent for that time PEM scope and that scope had adjustments for the windage in mils and the BDC in meters on the top. So two turrets, elevation turret and the windage or turret. And also in 1940, if you guys watched previous episodes about the Mosin's snipers, you know that the Soviets were actually fielding and issuing Bramit suppressors. This was an absolutely jaw-dropping rifle for the 1940. Starting off with 150 yards, I got a 300 yards on the setting, so I will execute the holdover. This was very common practice for the Russian snipers. So let's roll. Well, are we ready, right? Let's do it. Beautiful. Dead in the center of the body uh, mess. Ula, we will advance uh, to 250 yards, okay? Okay. Again, I'm going to keep the same setting on the turret. And as you guys can see, we are shooting from elevated position, which I think uh, fully simulates what the snipers have to do in the field, right? Uh, Nobody's shooting from the belly <laughs> in the real world. Well, are, you, are we ready? We're ready. All right. Again, I have to aim lower. Okay, that's a hit on the plate. We are close to the center of the body uh, of the mess. Well, I will advance. Yeah, I will take that hit. That's, that's a good hit with the holdover. Uh, we'll go for 300 yards and I will uh, try to hit that magic target, okay? Okay. Magic target on the menu. <laughs> and again, I'm going to keep the same setting on the turret. Let's go. All right, we'll have it. That's a nice hit. I could see this in my scope. Advancing to 350 yards. I'll keep the same setting. I'll just hold uh, higher right now. And uh, we'll see if we can control that field without touching scope. So Ula, 350, okay? Okay. <clears throat> and let me know. 350 is ready. All right. Let's see. Beautiful hit. Beautiful holdover. Perfect execution. 
right. Ola, 400 uh, yards uh, target, okay? Okay. And for a 400, guess what? I'm going to adjust my turret. So, we'll roll with the setting for the 400. <laughs> but, perfect execution and inside 300 meters plus, 300 meters will be 330 yards roughly, we went to 350 without adjusting the scope and as you could see, we absolutely dominated that field. So, whatever you're ready, Ula. It's ready. Dead in the center. An absolutely massacre. <laughs> we are pulverizing those targets. Ula, 450 yards, okay? okay? 450 yards, that's the target on the tree, okay? With the tree background. <laughs> and I'm going to hold my setting on the turret uh, from 400 and we'll see if we can whack it with the holdover. I will basically hold on the head level and uh, we'll see how that's going to work out for me. All right. As soon as Ola is ready. It's ready. All right, she's ready. Good. Boom, that's a hit, beautiful hit again. I just want to see it. I, I think I seen it around neck. Yep, and that's exactly what I have seen in my scope. So perfect execution again, guys, from 400 to 450 without touching the scope. Now again, I'm going to dial for the 500 setting and we'll go from there. So we'll have 500 yards, please. Okay, give me a sec. All right, take your time. And as you could see, so far, we're just marching without any sweat. And this rifle proves to be extremely oh, accurate in the hands of the user <laughs> so far. We will see. I see the wind is picking up. Uh, I could uh, see the netting here on the right side moving and we'll see. I'll probably put a little bit of adjustment for that 500 yards. Let's go. All right, well, it's ready. I think we are dead in the center of the body of the mess. But let me check in my spotting scope. Yes, it, it looks like hit there. So, I will take that all day uh, long. All right, uh, 550. Again, I think I'm going to execute the holdover. So, we don't uh, jump to the scope that much. And I'm just going to hold uh, on the top of the head. We'll see how that's going to work out. The target right now, I see we are approaching the targets which are in the sunny field. And that's fine. I just hope the camera will catch it nicely. So, as uh, soon as Ola will let me know that we are ready, I'll put the route to the chamber. We are ready. All right. And that's going to be a holdover again. So, let's see what we can do here, guys. I think we are close to the neck. You are on the neck. And, yep. That scope is really good. Oh, 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 beautiful. Beautiful hit, beautiful execution. Uh, I couldn't be, be more happy uh, than that. And absolutely pulverizer. This rifle should be called pulverizer. <laughs> All right, enough. We're going to 600 yards, Ula, okay? Okay. And I'm going to adjust for the 600. That should take us home or 600 and as you guys can see I'm placing the rounds on the top of the magazine I do have a sniper mod to the followers I will show you on the pictures how it is looking like and that was actually authorized by the Red Army for the sniper rifle so very interesting mod 
and that rifle came with it like that so uh, it works so uh, really nicely you don't have to stick the rounds to the magazine you can just top them off putting on the uh, follower and it fits beautifully okay let's go all right Ula is ready 600 yards That's a hit on the plate. I think a little bit low, but that could no, be... No, you are left arm. Left arm, not low. Uh, I seen the splash, I was pushed more to the left, uh, and the reason for this was because of that breeze, which I think I have seen it on the field. Uh, and you know what? Uh, this is a good hit. It would be right here, right? So this guy is eliminated as far as I am concerned. Can we do the better hit? Absolutely. Uh, let's let's try out. Will are you still on that target? Oh no. No. Okay, then that's fine. That's fine. Let's go to 650. Okay, we'll, we'll take that hit at the at the uh, 600. We'll we'll let them limp off the field. <laughs> All right. 650. Then I'm going to keep the same setting on the turret, and I'm just going to execute a uh, holdover, and we'll see where we're going to land with our uh, death. Let's okay. experiment. All right. The wind really is picking up. Now, I see that netting is moving more and more. We'll see. But then again, on the 600 hours on the left side, so maybe don't hold that much. That's a hit. That's a hit on the plate. I just don't know where. Too far from my... my 36 o'clock. Okay. It's low. All right, so this is perfect hit windage wise. And from the holdover, you can see how much we dropped on that bullet, guys. We are in the guts. I will take that hit, taking into the account uh, that I was executing the holdover. The idea is to hit the body. And those Ipsic sized targets, they are modified Ipsic, but still it's, it's smaller than little bit than the average human size, but it reflects this size uh, very, very well. Will, will, this will be a good hit uh, in the real world. Ula will advance to 700 yards, okay? Okay. For this, I have to dial on the scope. I'm not going to hold up anymore. Uh, and we'll see we just gotta watch out for that wind the wind comes and goes that that breeze that starts playing a difference uh, at those distances so uh, i gotta be careful all right well let me know when you're ready where are you let's go all right she's ready let me see what i can do here yeah that wind it's a light breeze the way i'm feeling it Beautiful, that's center a hit. mass. That's a hit. It's a hit on the target. Uh, well, I'm celebrating already. Let me see if I can even spot. Oh, yes. Yes, absolutely. Perfect windage holdover and perfect elevation hit. Uh, guys, what can I say? Uh, I told you this is the best. This is the peak sniper Soviet performance. Uh, and absolutely one of my favorite sniper rifles at the PEM is and this rifle specifically with this setup with Bramit jaw dropping a hammer all right going back to the studio in the woods so what is uh, the history of uh, the PEM uh, rifles in 1931 Russians uh, fielded PE version of the M9130 sniper rifle. The difference was, of course, they had scopes on so-called top mount. Well, only after around uh, four years of using those rifles, the feedback from the field, from the snipers, came back and they were absolutely dissatisfied with the performance of those uh, rifles the rifles could not hold the zero very well mounts were coming loose from the recoil something had to be done soviets quickly went to work and they reached out to the existing solution in their inventory nkvd troops actually 
were using the rifles with so-called gecko mount since early 1930s. Those mounts were designed by the Germans and you may ask why the Germans? Well, in previous episodes I explained already that the whole sniper program for the Red Army ironically was sparked by the Germans and they had a tremendous input on the mounts and the scopes and the whole philosophy of the sniping. Of course, Soviets grabbed that and run with that ball and improved down the line, which is again kind of funny because if you look at the Germans when they entered the World War II, when they started the World War II, their sniper program rather was on the back burner. But going back to that so called Gecko mount, that mount was tested by the Soviets. And they found out, and they already had the good feedback from the NKVD troops, that it is performing very, very well. They quickly made the copy, but they did make some modifications. They opted out to have open rings on the top of the mount. They shrinked the mount in size. The PE scope was also modified, and the PE, PEM version was fielded, or selected, should I say, first and then filled it for the rifle. Those scopes are for power and they are outstanding. That being said, because this equipment was produced in the 1930s, you have to remember that probably some of them have seen a lot of action and they were worn out and often what you will see on those turrets, if you adjusting the turret you will see maybe reticle jumping so that means that one of the mechanism inside needs to be reconditioned so actually for this i used two scopes to make the one good one uh, but we like to keep the equipment original on this channel as much as possible this is original pem sniper rifle original pem scope only mount is uh the basically a copy of the the old mounts because i do have the old mount but it was uh, dug out so it was it's not really rated for it for the use anymore anyway going back to the history of the rifle so since 1935 the work has been done on those uh, rifles and around 1937 38 the production of the pem sniper rifles started this was done exclusively at the tula factory only tula factory before the war before the soviets entered the world war ii was making uh, these uh, rifles and it was a very successful production those rifles were used heavily in stalingrad so you could see them on the pictures uh, from the vasily zaitsev in, and other snipers as well and they served through the whole world war ii uh, that being said what happened in the summer 1940 Soviets were advancing their program for the infantry rifles and as you know the SVT-40 was fielded in. It was also hope on the Soviet sides that they can make from SVT-40 the sniper version of that rifle. That unfortunately turned out to be not such a good idea and because how hard to manufacture the SVT-40 rifle was, it turned out to be a really bad decision. Why? Because just the one year later, the Operation Barbarossa started. The Hitler invades the Soviet Union. Losses in the men and the equipment in the opening days and weeks of the Operation Barbarossa for the Soviets are absolutely astonishing. There is a shortage of the rifle, especially the sniper rifles. Going back to the SVT-40, as I said, it was very difficult and hard to produce the SVT-40 in the peacetime. Now imagine what's happening when you are at war. 
Soviets needed sniper rifles. Since the production of the PEM sniper rifle was halted in 1940, they quickly came up to the decision that they have to reboot the PEM sniper rifles. Now, the issue was that the Tula factory had to be evacuated because of the advancing of Germans. So that whole factory was packed in and pushed further to the east. Ice turned on the Izhevsk factory and Izhevsk factory was tasked with producing a PEM sniper rifles at that time. Eventually, the Tula factory was put back online, all the setups were made, and you need a lot of machining for those side mounts, so that took some time. But around 1942, those rifles were being produced at the factory, uh, and they were exiting the, the building and going to the front line troops. At the same moment, Soviets were working on another version of the sniper rifle, which was the PU sniper. We covered this again in one of the previous episodes. Eventually, the PU sniper rifle phased out the PEM, that was we talking about basically in November 1942, and the PU snipers took it over. Why the PEM was dropped? It was nothing wrong with the rifle. The mount, the optic, everything was performing great, but PU was easier to manufacture in the larger quantities because the optic was mass much less complicated and most importantly the sight mount which Soviets designed was much easier to manufacture and was offering much more forgiveness for assembly line and tweaks done than the so-called uh, gecko or PEM side mount. So that was the reason why the PU sniper eventually took over and the PEM production ended. All PEM sniper rifles, original PEM sniper rifles I have seen, they are outstanding shooters and this one is no different. It shoots the lights out. I'm going to shoot with this rifle in the upcoming Vintage Sniper Championship in uh, Paris, Tennessee, unless something happens to the scope. And I'm running out of those scopes <laughs> to keep them maintained. But uh, I'm planning to shoot that PM sniper rifle with the Bramit suppressor at the championship match and we will see how this rifle will do. All right, as always, that's it from me. Thank you for watching, thank you for tuning in, and a big thanks to our Patreon supporters as well. Thank you guys. Big, big, big appreciation for your support. It helps us to keep making those videos and bringing the history alive to your homes. All right, see you in the next video. Bye.